Hi, on my left hand side I have what has got to be the best camera body I've ever used for wildlife photography and on my right hand side I have the best telephoto lens I've ever used for wildlife photography. Unfortunately you can't fit that lens onto that camera body. What a fantastic combination it would be if you could. And what we're looking at is the Sony A1 camera body with its incredible autofocus and the lens is the Olympus 150 to 400 mm Micro Four Third lens. So that's a two times crop factor built into it. So it's really a 300 to 800 mm lens. Then it's got the built in 1.25 extender, which is optically perfect. I can't tell when I'm using that, unlike other extenders. So it's up to a thousand mm lens at 5.6. What a great combination they would be. I've been using the Sony for about 10, 11 months now. I bought it purely because of the bird eye tracking, which is so successful. It's, it's not quite a 100% success rate with birds in flight, but it's very close to 100%. The Olympus M1X, that has bird eye tracking in it, and it works with a bird on the floor, on a branch, just moving around. And it's useful because you don't have to worry about the focusing point, it simply follows the eye. But as soon as that bird launches into flight, it doesn't begin to track it at all. So this is an important day today. It's the 15th of February, 2022, and Olympus, or now OM Digital Solutions, have announced their next camera, the OM-1. And I don't want to be in this situation where I'm using two camera systems. Modern cameras, far too complicated. I want to get back to one system so I can become familiar with it. So I want to sell one or the other. And I've got to make a decision. Which way am I going to go? Sony or Olympus? I've got lots of Olympus cameras. I've only got the one Sony camera body and lens. So I'd rather go the Olympus route. Now they've released the spec of this camera. There's only two things I'm interested in. Does it have blackout in the viewfinder or is it now just constant viewing? Well, the press release answers that. There's no blackout in the viewfinder like many modern cameras and like the Sony has had for a while now. That's very important. When you're following a bird in flight, you don't want that flickering in the viewfinder. It makes it difficult to keep following the bird. You want constant viewing. So we've got that, that's a given. So it's just down to the autofocus. The autofocus has got to be in the same ballpark as this camera and if it is then I'll, I will swap over. The one thing I'm not vaguely worried about when comparing these two cameras and deciding which way to go is image quality. I never have been bothered about that. If I thought there was an issue with the image quality of Micro Four Third cameras I'd never have swapped to them in the first place. I was using Canon cameras for decades and I think it's three four years ago I swapped to Olympus and when, when I'm processing the files between these two cameras I shoot raw in both, so sometimes I'm processing them both at the same time. I'm not aware that one is a full chip camera and you can see the image quality is better. It just isn't there. The ratio is different. One's a 4x3 ratio, the other's a 3x2, but image quality, no. Now I'm not going to try and convince you there's no difference in the image quality between these cameras. You're going to convince me. The main point I'm trying to make in this YouTube film is whenever I'm buying a new camera, I never think I'm going to get better quality pictures by doing so. There will be other features I'm interested in. Currently it's the autofocus, but when I swapped from Canon cameras to the Olympus mirrorless, it was because of all the fantastic advantages of mirrorless cameras. Not that I was going to get better quality pictures. And it's the same now. I'm deciding between the Sony and, and the Olympus, but nothing to do with quality. I can't look at a photograph and tell you what camera or what lens it was taken with. I'll look at a photograph and I'll judge it on whether the bird's in a nice posture, whether it's a nice perch, whether there's a nice background, whether the lighting was, was attractive, but I can never tell you what camera or lens a picture's taken with. So what I've done is I've set up a website and I've loaded 10 pictures onto it. Five of them are taken with the Sony A1 and the 200 to 600 mm lens. The other five, you've probably guessed it, are taken with the Olympus M1X and the 150 to 400 mm lens. And then I'm going to ask you to tell me which five are taken with the Sony. But we'll come back to that in a moment. First, let's look at the more traditional way of comparing images taken with different lenses on YouTube. 
we're going to open up these two female pintail ducks. So we open them up in Photoshop, we go to Windows, Arrange, 2 up vertical, and that will put the two pictures side by side. And then if we pick up the Zoom tool, and then have that box Zoom in all windows ticked, then if I zoom in one window it will zoom in the other. Now I'm going to start zooming in on these pictures and then I'm going to be telling you which one I think is the sharpest but I think you'll really struggle to see it. YouTube is a compressed file format and it makes seeing these little differences very very hard. When I'm watching somebody else I actually don't really want to see the samples I just hit the fast forward and see what their conclusions are. But anyway let's do it. At the moment I'm thinking the left hand one is the sharper looking image but that it's very close and that's on the head as I go on to the body well now I can't really tell so it's like the left hand one seems to have more definition on the head on the body it's about equal so I'll just look up and see it's, it's the left hand side that's the um, Sony camera the right hand was the Olympus let's look at another couple we'll pick on these male pintail do exactly the same Zooming in on the head again and I say this is the traditional way of doing it. I just query its value. This time we've gone to 100%. I think it's the right hand head. Yes, when we go to 200%, it's definitely the right hand head looks the more feather detail in it. Then we start looking at the body. And again, I think I can see a little bit more detail in the right hand one and the right hand one was the Sony. A couple of shell ducks will do the same again. 200%. It's the left hand one. More definition. And again, I'm just checking the file name. It's the Sony camera is on the left. So that's three out of three. I've picked the Sony camera as having slightly more quality. This should be more interesting because it's so small in the frame. A lap wing, we've got to 100%. And the left hand one, which is the Sony, um, has the edge again. But it's marginal. It's very, very close. So it's four out of four that I managed to work out which one was the, the Sony camera. But does this really matter? What value has this got? Well, having to zoom in to 100 or 200% to make this decision. And we don't normally view our pictures like this. So this is why I wanted to do it on a website. So here is the web address, which I will also put in the description underneath the video. We have five pictures taken with the Sony A1 200 to 600 mm lens and five pictures taken with the Olympus M1X 150 to 400 mm lens. They're all from RAW files. I kept the RAW processing very simple by using D times O Pure RAW automated RAW processor so I don't have to tweak anything. Then I opened the pictures up in Photoshop and I did tweak the levels trying to match them but it was an absolutely minor tweak but no extra sharpening or anything else of that nature done. We have the problem with the ratio. One camera takes a 3x2, the other a 4x3 ratio. So I've had to crop the Sony and this is what I've done. With the Sony files I have picked up the crop tool and just trimmed off the edges to make it 4x3. So we click on one of the thumbnails to bring up a larger picture notice that every picture has a letter this is picture A and we have a, a forward arrow and a backwards arrow as well so we can scroll through each picture also if you come up to the double arrows in this left hand corner you can press that you can get a larger file now the pictures have been loaded at 4000 pixels by 3000 pixels so you can see them at this bigger size. You don't need to, and you probably need a 4K monitor before you can make use of that. And this is how we normally look at pictures. We don't zoom in to 100 or 200 percent. You enter into your camera club competition or the international exhibition world. That's what the selector will be looking at, a normal size. This is a stuffed or model bird. I wanted one that didn't move. It would be the same if you're sending pictures off to a picture library or picture publishers direct. They won't be zooming in at 100, 200% trying to decide which camera it's taken with. They're just going to look at it filling their screen and they just can't tell them apart. 
But if you think you can tell which pictures were taken with a Sony full chip camera, then just list the five letters that represent that camera. If it's A, B, C, D and E, just put that in one of the comments underneath the description. I release a YouTube film every week, so next week I'll tell you the answer and also we'll discuss what happens if we print these same pictures. Can you tell them apart then? And I've recruited a couple of photographers to help make that decision. Thanks for watching.